Hi everyone, this is GKCS. We are talking about a problem from Code Forces, a very recent problem, which is the D problem of Code Forces. So this is a little difficult, and if you don't know much about algorithms and comparative programming, then uh, you should probably have a look at the basics before you start with this. Um, the problem is that you have a river, and you have frogs on one side, uh, and they have mates on the other side. So all the frogs want to get to the mates. But there's a problem uh, that the river is of width w, right? Uh, and on each point in this river, so because the width is w, that w minus 1 points on the river. Uh, and on each point, it contains a of i stones, where i goes from 1 to w minus 1. So in our sample case, w is equal to 4, which means i goes from 1 to 3. You can see this is a of 1, a of 2, and a of 3. Right? And on each point, it has AI stones. So the special thing about these stones is that the moment a frog jumps on these stones, uh, on one of these stones, basically, and it jumps out of it, that stone sinks into the river. So it can't be used by another frog. OK, so one frog can use one stone at one time. So that's one of the things. The second thing is that a frog can jump at most a distance L. Okay, so if it's jumping from here to uh, let's say L is equal to 2, so it can jump up to this point or it can jump up to this point. So a frog's maximum distance that it can make from x to y is y minus x has to be less than or equal to L. Okay, so your job is to find out how many frogs at most can reach the other side of the river. Okay, Use as many algorithms as you like, uh, but this problem is actually much simpler than uh, you might think. Now, one of the simplest cases that we should get out of our way is, uh, what if the frogs can jump just distance 1, L is equal to 1? So in that case, all the frogs can jump up to this point. Then how many other stones are on this point will be used by the frogs. Uh, and then they'll jump to this point, and then they'll jump over here. So this point has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 stones. So let's just make that into an array, which is what it is actually. So 5 on this side. At point number 2, we have 3 stones. Point number three, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight stones. So now if we take L equal to one, it means that five frogs can jump up to this point. Then three frogs jump up to this point, two of them die. Then the remaining three jump up to this point. There's eight stones, three get used, uh, but we don't really care because they'll never get used again. And then finally they reach the other bank. So mission accomplished for three frogs. So in this case, uh, the what you got was 3. And in general, if L is equal to 1, you can say the maximum number of frogs which can reach the other point is the minimum in the array that you have. That's one, one simple way to look at it. The other way to look at it is, if you're on this point, if you're from the other side of the bank, who are the people who can reach you? 1 is this point, OK? So I'm, I'm taking L backwards. Let's say L is equal to 2 now. So these guys can reach you, people who can get to this point, and people who can get to this point can reach you. Okay. So if I'm at this point, will I ever make the decision to come over here with L equal to 2? And the answer is no. Of course I won't because I'll be wasting a stone. If L is equal to 2, I'm just going to make that direct jump. So for a general case where we have this big fat array whose size is really big and L is somewhere up to this point. So this is, let's say N and this is N minus L. Logically, this is the only segment you need to look at if you're on the other side of the bank. These guys are the only people who will jump directly to your point. They're the only people who can make it, right? So this is the segment you're looking at. Now, if you look at one point behind the other side of the bank, the 
people who can actually reach this point are from this segment, right? Because we just argued that no one within the segment of L will ever make jumps within that segment because it doesn't make sense. They're, they're just wasting space. So for the last segment, uh, they're going to jump to the other side of the bank. But for this segment, what they'll be doing is uh, they can jump up to this point, they can jump up to this point, this point, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to go through uh, the whole mathematical, you know, uh, proof for this, but you can see what's going to happen uh, graphically and intuitively. At this point, you're seeing that there's a segment of size L which can get here. If you take one point behind that, you will see there's a segment of size L starting over here. Basically, there's just one more point added, which can get here and so on and so forth. Now, the people who can get here are summed up by this segment. The people who can get here are summed up by this segment. So you might be thinking of a dynamic programming solution, but things get much simpler when you realize that it's all about segments. It's about, a, it's about uh, the segment having the minimum number of stones. And the reason for that is it's like, it's like a choking point, right? It's a funnel, it's a, a single point of failure is what they call in system design, but uh, it's, it's a place, it's like a funnel basically, where all the frogs are making jumps and then comes a segment where only so many frogs can survive. So you're looking for that segment, which is having the smallest total number of stones. Okay. And that, that segment is going to be of size L. So that's it, that's the logic of the problem. Um, find the smallest sum segment of size L. And the solution for this is actually extremely simple. Uh, you just use a two pointer approach in an array where there's a pointer X and a pointer Y and you're going to find the smallest segment. So the code for this is in the description below. And there's not any test cases which will, you know, there's no tricky test case as such. Um, it's an interesting problem. You can actually tell your friends about it. You can share this and see whether they solve it within the first five or 10 minutes. That'll, that'll be a challenge. Uh, if you have any doubts or suggestions about this or about any other problems, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, then please press the like button. And also, yeah, if you want further videos for this, you can subscribe. Until next time then, see you. What are you doing on this channel? <laughs> but yeah, well, it's a, it's a difficult problem from Code Forces, so you should know a little bit about programming. Anyway, the problem is that